this demonstration video is to share with you my process of intuitive painting. Begging Bowl 89 came to me as an inspired image, the way many images have come to me in my artistic path and past. And my interest is in sharing with you the process of making an intuitive painting. Here's the original sketch for Begging Bowl 89 after I saw the image. I then select a canvas size that I think best fits the scale of the image and go to work. I let the initial sketch be an inspired image for me, an inspired step in the expression of the painting. I start with a red background on each of my canvases, whether it's a landscape, a still life, a figurative painting, an abstract painting. We live on a planet that is basically green and blue. The red in the composition from the background allows me to warm up the painting and highlight edges where it dramatically fits for the composition of the painting. I use a sash brush quite a lot. Sash brush is a fabulous tool because it allows you to scumble and chunk in a painting as I'm doing now. It's also got a point to it, and so I can draw with it when I am ready to draw. It's good for detail lines, it's good for general lines. And I'm starting with earth colors. I use, as did the great painters from the Renaissance, burnt sienna raw sienna, burnt ochre, basic earth colors in order to create the general structure, highlights, shadows, and middle tones of any composition I'm working on. Doesn't matter the subject. Found that this to be a very effective way for me to build color and then finish the painting. It takes me six, seven layers of color for each painting to really feel like I've gotten the color and the painting to come alive. There are three forms of light available to us as artists. There's the light of nature, there's the light on the surface of our canvas, and there's the light of inspiration. The light of inspiration, you can look to Rembrandt, you can look to Van Gogh, you can look to the stained glass windows of Tiffany. Then you'll understand what I mean by the three forms of light. So initially I just block in the painting. I'm following the inspired sketch that I had to roughly put the pieces of the puzzle, the pieces that make up the composition together. And then as I follow myself through the intuitive painting, allowing the painting to morph and develop as I paint my way through it, finding my way in the dark, looking to find a way to bring the painting alive and fulfill the energy of the inspired sketch. As in all painting, you work the composition from top to bottom, bottom to top, side to side, front to back. I like to work off of a large palette so that I can mix large areas of paint. It works well with my brush, the kind of brush I use, the sash brush. And it gives me the freedom to paint in an expressive manner. I'm not interested in just drawing my way through a painting. Painting is like dancing for me. Painting is listening. I think the real secret to making art is the real secret to life. They're one and the same. And that is to be listening. Painting, sculpting, crafting, living life, it's a journey of listening. It's a combination method of technology and expressing the imagination, intuition, and inspiration. To combine and integrate all of that information and those perceptions and those intentions means to be present in the moment. 
That's the best way, the clearest way, the simplest way to allow yourself to see, hear, and feel and understand all of the information you have access to. It's the best way to deliver your creative will as well. We live on a planet that is revolving and rotating. We're floating in the Milky Way. We're alive in the middle of the universe in constant motion. That means left to right and top to bottom, up and down. So the mind, the body, the skin, the emotions, the brain, the nervous system, the sympathetic, the parasympathetic nervous systems, we are all receiving untold amounts of information constantly. Our whole system is geared towards achieving balance or keeping ourselves in balance in the moment, in the, in the face of the onslaught of all of this information. Painting is a balancing act. Listening is a great way paying attention to your listening. And your breath is a great way to stay in balance. And it's a great way to dance your way through a painting. This is how you make an intuitive painting, by listening, breathing, and being with yourself, letting your mind calm down. I always listen to music when I paint because it helps to keep my left thinking brain occupied so I can relax and enjoy the journey, the dance of painting. The begging bowl is an image that I have repeatedly painted and received as inspired images. Originally it came to me through a story told to me by a teacher, my teacher, Dr. Akhtar Asin, a psychologist and noted author. He read an old Chinese script to me, a Taoist script that says, come to life with a bowl, an empty bowl, a beggar's bowl. And for me, this was a great metaphor, a great teaching, a great learning about being receptive. What is intuitive painting? Each moment of life is spontaneous, unrehearsed, unknown. Life birthing itself moment by moment. We can paint that way. This video presentation has two major components. Understanding the inspired image and the expression of the inspired image through intuitive painting. After receiving an image, after embracing that image and having the desire, the will to execute that image, how do I make it through form, technique, color, hue, method, in order to express the livingness, the heart and soul of the inspired image? What I'm offering you for your consideration, what I'm suggesting is the opportunity of authenticity as an artist and human being. True inspiration comes from our relationship to the living moment, the universe, the breath, the now, however you want to frame it. The living moment, this living moment, our aliveness, our authenticity, our earnest intentions as human beings allows us to see, hear, and feel each moment, each living moment, each breath, the now of our existence. In the now of our existence, it is possible to receive true living inspiration. It's said that Lao Tzu, who wrote the Tao Te Ching, said, the usefulness of the cup is in its emptiness. For me, the begging bowl is a metaphor it's about being partners with the universe. It's about being receptive. It's about our bodies, our being. We're not here alone, unattached. We're here, a thread of life to grander life itself. We're all connected to each other and we're all connected to life. There's no separating us from our connection to life. We're each here on a solo journey in partnership with the universe. The begging bowl is a metaphor for being receptive to that partnership, for listening, for learning, for receiving, and for giving forth as well. For me, the bowl has moved through the river of life, as we all do. My life, my river, your life, your river. 
Some of us are on a lake, some of us are on an ocean, some of us are in a stream. We're all at different places at different times. Water is a great metaphor for time and space, time and place. There's another lovely quality to the begging bowl for me, and that's the notion of gratitude. I like to say gratitude is the attitude. As we all go through life, we have difficulties, emotional difficulties, artistic difficulties, personal difficulties, financial difficulties. I find that when I use gratitude as my attitude, I'm able to get through any kind of blockage, any kind of difficulty with that and a little bit of hard work. Uh, I like my colors to be really clean, full of light, absorbing and reflecting light, color and tone. So I keep the turpentine jar. I use Gamasol right next to my palette in order to keep my brush clean in order to not make muddy colors. When I'm chunking in a painting, when I'm constructing the rough shape of the house I want to paint. I don't care so much about muddy colors. In fact, those muddy colors allow for layers of gray and texture to be formed underneath the final expression of light and dark when the painting is complete. And I work my way through the painting front to back, top to bottom, side to side. It is my dance. It is where I am. It is the livingness that I'm involved in. To be an artist means to reflect and engage the world around ourselves. How do we engage that world around ourselves? Is it by replicating? Is it by duplicating? Is it by following styles, techniques, and structures that have been created for us before? Are we going to use a historical approach? Or do you want to engage the world through your own living experience? That, to me, is what painting is all about. The painting is my living experience. I want to be present with it. I want the painting to talk to me. I want to talk to the painting and go back and forth, listening, seeing, and expressing. Hearing is my guideline. I listen deeply to myself and to the unfolding expression of the experience and the inspiration in front of myself. To be here, to see, to hear, to feel and respond in the raw experience of my life at this time. This means to be present, to be sincere, to have the intention of an honest response. When I'm painting, I squint my eyes. This allows me to focus in and out of the, the painting, to get closer to an area, to get further away from an area, and to be able to see how the light, the dark, the composition, the structure are all blending together. I also step backwards quite a bit and look at the painting from a distance and then come forward, engage the painting again, and squint as I paint, not continually, just sometimes. I keep a rag in my hand in order to keep the amount of paint that I want in the brush at the right level and to keep my brush clean and my colors clean. I wear loose clothing. I work on a large palette. I use a large brush. I don't want anything to encumber the possibilities of the expression of painting. It's like a dancer. A dancer learns steps and then learns to create a whole dance or learns to freeform and just dance. Which of us doesn't like to dance and experience joy in the living moment? So working the painting, I practice developing highlights and shadows. I draw in dark forms and shapes. I create movement. And again, for me, it's all intuitive. It's all following the painting as the painting unfolds. follow a painting, to follow the intuition of a painting, is to listen and be present in the moment, let going of my preconceptions of what something's supposed to be, and allowing the image of the inspiration to come alive through my hand. That's the key part to an intuitive painting, allowing 
the painting to come alive through intuitive expression, finding my way. For me, it's, it's like looking for a pearl in a coal mine, in a dark coal mine. I move through dark, empty space, feeling my way, breathing, trusting, having faith in the experience of the now, having faith and trust in my abilities and experience as an artist to paint and find my way. I believe in life. I believe in myself as an artist. And I believe in the expression of painting. I use whatever it takes to make the painting come alive. I use the brush. I use my hand. I use a rag. I use my sleeve. You have a number of tools available to yourself in the freedom of your own movements. Use what you have to use to make the effect and get the paint to express itself the way you want it to express. So as I've said, I use my hand to roughly shape in edges uh, of a part of the painting, and I use a rag as well. Sometimes a rag will help wipe out what I don't like, or it'll help blend in something that needs blending or it'll help me lighten an area up that I want to have a middle tone rather than a dark or a highlight tone. It's a good idea to move brushes around, go from small to large, even though I use a sash brush quite a lot. I also have smaller brushes in the turpentine jar that I use for drawing in detail and creating and painting edges. It's important to keep the inspired image alive in your mind's eye using the tools of your hand a rag your brushes to bring that inspired image that living image alive this is the journey of inspired painting this is the journey of intuitive painting how do i find my way to the light to the consciousness to the ideas to the expression that are inside the inspired image Using a rag on, on the rocks, I blend color in order to create a feeling of mist because inside of me, I see the begging bowl in the waterfall, the spray of water. I can feel it. When you get an inspired image, see it, hear it, feel it. Allow it to come alive inside of you and then allow it to be your guide as you paint your way to it and through it. So the painting is coming along after a few days. Normally it takes me weeks to make a painting. I was inspired to do this as a demonstration piece. And so I have uh, worked on the painting nonstop for the last three or four days in a row. So after a few days of building the basic painting, I'm ready to start adding light. There are layers of light in gray tones, mid tones of the painting. Now I'm ready to start putting on the highlights and really the strength of the light in the water as well as the light coming to the water. There are painters who are realists, who are photorealists, who are academic painters, and I respect those painters and that work. That is not what this is. This is a journey of discovery. Life is a journey of discovery. It's about listening in the moment. Let the painting shift and change depending on what you see and feel. Let it morph as you morph. Listen to yourself. Take your time. Listen to yourself as you choose colors. Study technique. Study how to build your painting. Work on your drawing. And more than anything, Discover your own internal dance with your canvas. So as I was making the painting, I see this little rock down in the corner of the painting. It looks like the Buddha's head to me. So for fun, I went ahead and colored in the Buddha's head and thought, well, maybe the Buddha head will be in the painting. I spend a lot of time in my chair looking at my paintings and seeing where there are problems and seeing where the drawing, the composition, the color, the light, the shadow, the tones are or are not working. At the end of the painting session yesterday, 
I put in the Buddha head because it was in rough form and I drew it in for fun and thought, well, maybe Buddha head will be in the painting. Sitting down in my rocking chair and looking at the painting, I realized that the Buddha head was not going to fit, was not going to be a good part of the painting and chose to take it out because it was going to interrupt the flow of what I had to say. It was going to interrupt the flow of the expression of the original inspiration that Begging Bull 89 is all about. So first thing in this next session, I'm going to take out the Buddha head and integrate that rock into the painting. Sometimes our favorite part of the painting is something that we have to forsake, change, let go of, in order to make the painting work out. I find that I can't be attached to anything except the initial inspiration to make the painting come alive. The painting is going to change. The painting is going to morph. Have courage. Self-doubt is only a bear trap in the forest. One you don't need. One you need to be aware of. Hold fast in your inspiration. Hold fast to your intuition. Follow your intuition like searching for gold or a pearl in a dark coal mine. That's what your intuition is there for. Hold fast to your intention. Trust yourself. Trust your partnership with the universe. And you're not dangling on the end of a string by yourself. You're in conversation with life. Let that conversation come alive for you. How do you know when to quit? How do you know when you've done enough in a painting? For me, you know, I sort of always consider myself Dr. Frankenstein. When the painting feels alive, when it feels like it has breath in it, and corner to corner, top to bottom, front to back, side to side, there's nothing else I can do to correct the drawing, correct the color, or change the light in a painting. When it has come alive, when it feels like it has breath in it, then I feel like the painting is done. Less than that, it's not, it's not really achieving that level of inspiration that I'm out to communicate. I'm trying to communicate something from the level of inspired light that can touch each and every one of us. The word spontaneous is defined as coming from or resulting from a natural impulse or tendency without effort or premeditation, natural and unconstrained is further defined as indigenous or produced by a natural process. Spontaneity, as in spontaneous combustion, birthing a fire, birthing a spark. When we are painting, when we draw, when we have a creative idea, is there not an ignition? Of course there is. A spark which is the receptivity, the reception of inspiration with our being. Those two energies coming together. The spark from greater consciousness, from life itself, and we receive that spark. Those two energies come together and create a combustion, which we then transform through our labor into an expression of that inspiration. Spontaneity is the possibility of receptivity and response through years of study of technique, process, materials, and learning our craft. We have the chance to be spontaneous. We have the chance to receive an inspired image. We have an impulse. We have a combustion. And in the living moment, like a dancer, dance freely across the stage of our art, across the stage of the moment of our life, across the stage of our canvas. Each moment of life is a spontaneous, unrehearsed, unknown moment of birthing. Each moment of life is an unknown road and an unknown place in that road arriving. A painting is the same way. An intuitive painting is exactly the same as expressing and responding to a spontaneous or inspired image. I really love the final stages of a painting. As the painting has come together and I've gotten the form and the composition and the dimensions and the perspective the way I want it and the light and the color moving the way I want it, then adding the details of light and trying to make the painting come alive it's a, it's a very uplifting experience. It's a very expanding experience for me. It's also a little bit sad as the journey of this particular dance, as the journey of this particular painting comes to a close, there's a little bit of a sadness because for me it's such a, a, a great dance, such a great experience, a dance, a communion of my whole being 
in relation to life, in relation to the universe. It's a real joy of listening, of enlivening, of expressing. It's the place where I, as a human being, feel the most fulfilled and the most satisfied. The experience itself of expressing an inspiration, the experience of bringing it alive, of letting it enliven and enrich me. And each painting, I learn more about painting. Each painting, I learn more about expression. Everything is a journey of discovery and learning as we go through life. The energy of life is constant, like the flow of a stream. It's the boat that carries your soul, your being, your creativity, your expressive power. I urge you to tune into this, to discover your own expressionable possibilities. Open yourself to the livingness of now. Allow yourself as an artist to receive and express contemporary beauty, ideas, cultural reflections, and expressive revelations of your own being. You don't need anybody's permission to express, to discover, to try and find a way to use your voice, to use your technique, to use your sense of light and color, your sense of design, your sense of imagery, respond to your life through your art. You don't need permission to do it the way that you want to do it. You don't need permission to fulfill yourself, become yourself, walk your own life through your own art.